Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 241. Please turn to it. Page number 241 and today is our lesson number 342. This problem that you see there on page number 241 is the exact same problem that we, that, uh, that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE on the same page number. We have done every single math problem from this book here, the first edition. If you are interested in watching the original solution to the problem, you will find the original solution on day number 131. Let's see what we have here. What we have in this problem are three different functions. Two of which, for some reason, have been named, have been given a name. And the third one, they did not bother to name. They, they did not give, bother to give a name to the third graph, the third function. We're going to name that third function uh, ourselves so that it's easier to talk about it instead of saying this one, not that one. If there are three different functions in the problem, they have to have, they all have to have name. They have to be have name so that we can distinguish one from the other. If there are three different people sitting in the room, it's much better to give them names instead of going, hey you, not this, not not this guy, that one, not not he, not not she, not that one. It doesn't work that way. It's better to give somebody, uh, it's be better to give everybody a distinct name. Here, for some reason, they did not give a third function a name. The third one that I'm uh, talking about right now is actually is the simplest one. We're going to start out with that one, which is the parabola. Y is equal to y is equal to x squared. Then they also have a second function, which is j of x, which we are told is equal to root of x. And then we have k of x, which we are told is equal to root of, which we are told is equal to negative of root x. Not negative not root of negative x, we cannot take a, a square root of a negative number, it's a negative of root of x. Negative of root of x. And the first one is this one. So we have j, we have k, for some strange and inexplicable reason, they did not give this guy a name. Let's give this function a name. Let's call it, we have j, we have k, let's call it l of x. Okay? Which is a simple parabola, as you can see, it's a simple parabola, x and y, y is equal to x squared. When x is 0, y is going to be 0. It's a parabola sitting right at the origin. Let's plot it, shall we? Let's plot it. the first one which is the origin when x is 0 y is 0 and then when x is positive 1 or negative 1 when x is positive 1 or negative 1 y is going to be 1 because the relationship that we're looking at is y is equal to x squared and therefore whether it's positive 1 or negative 1 the square of positive 1 or negative 1 is just 1 so we have positive 1 and negative 1 y is just going to be 1 Then when x is positive 2 or negative 2, y is going to be 4. Positive 2 or negative 2, y is going to be 4. Those are the three points there of, the, of our parabola. We are not interested in the negative portion of the parabola. We are only going to concentrate on the positive portion of it because that's where all the action takes place. So here is our parabola. And the other one is right here, but like I said, we're not really interested in it. So that takes care of that part. Let's move on then. Now we're going to plot the next one, which is j of x, which is a root of x. We're done with this part, we're going to get rid of it. So y is equal to j of x, which we are told is equal to root of x. So here's our x, here's our y. Again, when x is 0, y is going to be 0, because the square root of 0 is 0. So they're going to start out here. When x is 1, y is going to be 1. 
Now technically speaking and strictly speaking when x is 1 y is the square root of 1. Similarly when x is 4 y is the square root of 4. And what is the square root of 1? What is the square root of 1? What is it that we are asking ourselves here? What is it that we are asking ourselves here? When we ask ourselves what is the square root of 4, what is it that we are asking ourselves? It's a very simple question. What we are asking ourselves is what is that number which what is that number which when multiplied by itself gives us 4? And turns out actually there are two such numbers. Positive 2 times positive 2 is going to give us 4, and so is negative 2 times negative 2. So the square root of 4 actually is positive 2 and negative 2 positive 2 and negative 2 but in this case we are not going to plot the negative part why not? why aren't we going to plot the negative part? we are going to ignore the negative part and we are just going to say square root of 4 is 2 not because, not because square root of 4 is 2 but it is 2 as far as we are concerned in this problem because if you read the question properly if we read the question properly if you read the careful question carefully it tells us that this relationship exists for as long as x is greater than or equal to 0. We are told that x has to be either 0 or something positive. x is not allowed to be negative here. So we are going to ignore the negative 2. So when, when x is 1, y is 1, so this goes through this point, and then when x is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, y is going to be 2. There we go. And our graph that we are looking at is this one. Voila. This is what we are looking at here. I'm going to now redraw it with a different color so that it's easier for us to see. There we go. And that's it. Similarly, similarly, to get the bottom half of the graph, we have another function which simply a negative stuck in front of it. It's the same values of y. The y coordinates are going to be the same for each given value of x. For each given value of x, the y coordinates are going to be the same, except with a negative stuck in front of it. And that's the, that's the last function that, they call, that, that we have, which they are calling k of x. k of x is simply negative of square root of x. k of x is equal to negative of square root of x. So everything is the same except it has a negative in front of it. So instead of 1, it is negative 1, it is negative 2. Notice we are not taking square root of a negative number. We can't take a square root of a negative number. Square root of a negative number does not exist. Square, we cannot take a square root of a negative number because the question is, when we take a square root of a number, the question is, what is that number which, when multiplied by itself, gives us 4? Well, a number has to be either positive or negative. So there is no such thing like this. We talked about it before. Square root of negative 9 is not going to work because then the question is what is the number which when multiplied by itself gives us negative 9? No such number exists because the number is going to be either positive or negative. A given number has to be either a positive number or a negative number. What else can it be? Now if it's a positive number then positive times positive is going to give us positive 9 and if it's negative number then negative 3 times negative 3 is going to give us positive 9 you can't take a square root of a negative number which is why the negative is stuck in front of, uh, in front of it, outside it's a different relationship, it's a k of x let's plot it, it's the same exact relationship as before except when x is 1, y is going to be negative 1 when x is 4, y is going to be negative 2 when x is 1, when x is 1, y is going to be negative 1 and when x is 4, y is going to be negative 2. Right there. That's it. That's what we're done. That's all there was. So the stop part, the red one was our j of x, I believe it was called. Yep. So this part right here is the j of x which is the square root of x. This part which we just plotted is k of x, which is a negative of the square root of x. And this parabola that we see here, this parabola here, is what we call, we give it a name, we christen it, we christen it, 
L of x, which was y squared. One last thing since I since I brought up the word, we have to learn it, christen it, we said. What does it mean to christen? Not Christ, christen. We learned this word before in our vocabulary lesson. Christen means, it, it, it has two meanings. Christen literally means to baptize somebody. Metaphorically, it just means to give someone or something a name. So we christened it. The last function here, the parabola, did not have a name. They call this function j of x, right, red one here. The bottom one, they call it the k of x. But the parabola that we have here, y is equal to x squared, they did not give that function a name. So we christened it L of x. We gave it a name. When did we learn this word? I'm curious here. Day number 63. Day number 63. So if you're interested in improving your vocabulary along with working on your math skill, if you look for, just look for GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day 63 or simply vocabulary word, forget about GRE, just vocabulary words, day 63, and you will see the video where, we'll, where we learn the word christen. So that's about it, we're done. That's the graph, that's what it looks like. I will see you tomorrow, where we'll continue our journey on the next page, where we're dealing with two more strange graphs, they are a parabola and a piecewise function, and we'll talk about those tomorrow, okay? Bye now.